well, if the eclipse is the end of the world, then this is going to be my last cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome, everybody, to what we call Cast Iron Wednesday. Uh, this is a tradition that a number of cooking channels on YouTube have been following for the last several years now, and it's uh, quite simple. On Wednesdays, we do a cast iron video, uh, really just to uh, have some fun, to show off our cast iron, and to, well, to produce some filler for YouTube, of course. But nonetheless, the most important is having the fun, at least I think so. So uh, I'm certainly glad to have been doing this uh, for uh, three and a half years now. Somehow I've been doing these live videos for that long, with some exceptions. There have been some delays, and a couple of them have been canceled for one reason or another, but we're on time tonight, which is good, oh, considering what a crazy week it's been. And that's kind of why I was going to, why I wanted to do a cake tonight. Um, yes, welcome everybody, because this is, in fact, the first Wednesday of April, 2024. And uh, usually this would be the night to do a uh, Q&A, ask me anything uh, question and answer session uh, about cast iron. And we will be doing that in a few minutes. Uh, but um, I got myself a, uh, another little gift in the mail um, yes, the other day. And it's one that I've really been itching to play with, especially since things are so crazy this week that this may be the only chance I have to use it, so I couldn't help doing so. And that, of course, would be the Lodge Cast Iron Loaf Pack. Uh, and we will get to that in a moment after, of course, we uh, welcome everybody here because thank you very much to everybody who's been uh, kind enough to show up here. Uh, we have a lot of regulars, and thank you so much to that. And hello to Cynthia Wesley and, pa and Pat Z and Randy Duffy and Pip Gorn. Buzz Fork 8. Remember to hit the like button. Well, thank you very much. And uh, VL Triple X. Check out that fancy mixer. Oh, yeah, this is my KitchenAid mixer that I think some of you know some of the stories behind this one. And uh, Mercy B. And hello, William Hurt. And hello, Jim F. Uh, Jim F., I think you're new here, or at least I don't recognize your name instantly. So thank you and welcome to my channel. And welcome to. Uh, Chris McGee and Mr. John 420 here from Missouri. Well, congratulations. And yeah, this is the month of 420, isn't it? You know, uh, I was kind of getting the idea that in a couple of weeks when 420 rolls around, I might use my cast iron and make some <clears throat> edibles. Uh, but we will uh, talk about that later. And yes, Cynthia, uh, Cynthia did fried chicken, mustard greens, cornbread, and candied yam. <laughs> And hello to Jimmy Langford and uh, to everybody who's been kind enough to uh, show up here tonight. Because, yeah, as I said, I had wanted to do some baking tonight uh, to play with the uh, Lodge loaf pan that I received the other day. And, uh, well, I'm going to be doing a pound cake, uh, first of all, because that is, uh, I've found that a pound cake is probably one of the easiest uh, cakes to make. And this way, I'm hoping we can get this cake done quickly, but not in a rush, of course. And then uh, we can indeed do some uh, cast iron Q&A. Uh, the, the actual loaf pan itself is in the oven right now. And rather than, and because of that, I've had to bring out another loaf pan here, which I'm embarrassed to say I have barely used. And yet here I am, I've gotten another loaf pan. Well, I intend to remedy that. Uh, this is the um, Camp Chef uh, loaf pan, cast iron loaf pan. It's a standard size of uh, most small loaf pans. It's, uh, what is it, like about maybe uh, 10 inches or so, or maybe a little less than 10 inches long and about uh, four to five inches wide. You know, as I said, it's your typical loaf pan. The newer large loaf pan is about, uh, about half an inch taller all around, and it is about an inch wider on each side. So, the differences are not that huge, but they are dip but they are considerable enough that uh, there should be quite a bit more volume in that newer loaf pan. So, uh, but yeah, as I said, this one is by Camp Chef, and I've had this one in my collection for a while. Have not used it nearly as often as I should, and I really need to try to remedy that, which again is one reason why I'm bringing this out tonight. Where is our special host for tonight? Um, well, well, the host is uh, currently heating up in the oven right now. While we, on the other hand, as I said, I wanted to do a cake uh, quickly. So um, that means we should probably get started as well. 
Um, yeah, and, which means let me uh, put this aside. And as I said already, pound cake. In addition to being in addition to being delicious, I mean, pound cake is of course legendary. It's one of the very first modern day cakes. It's also quite easy to make because this cake only has seven ingredients, um, most of which I have uh, actually uh, measured out already. Uh, just to be sure we can get this done if I don't get this cord caught on the uh, stand there. There it is. Um, we can, uh, come on, sorry about that. There we go. Yeah, most of which I have already measured out to make this as quick as possible. I've got three cups of flour here. I have the recipe for pound cake on my website. And as I said, it only has seven ingredients. So here is ingredient number one, which is, again, um, three cups of flour. Let me get past that screensaver. There we go. And to this, we add ingredient number two, which is one teaspoon of baking powder. Measure that out as best as I can. And to that, we do ingredient number three, which is half a teaspoon of salt. Nice, uh, ordinary table salt. And that pretty much covers it for the dry ingredients because the sugar is considered to be part of the wet ingredients. So we uh, put half a teaspoon of salt into this. And then from here, we have one essential step, as I've said a number of times before, got to whisk these dry ingredients together. Uh, I've pointed out the importance of whisking your dry ingredients when you're baking. And, and again, I can only say that was a lesson that I learned the hard way. Incorporating air into the batter is not optional. It is actually really a crucial step if you want your cake to rise, as well as to uh, take on a nice photogenic color. Of course, it doesn't take a lot of whisking to uh, get this done. And then from here, we get on to the wet ingredients, which is where I bring out, actually, I should probably raise this a little bit, the mixing bowl for my KitchenAid mixer. See, see, as I said, I'm trying to get this as quickly as possible without actually rushing. And into this, I have done ingredient number four, which is... Um, three cups of white sugar. And into this, all we need to do now is plop in three sticks of melted butter. Yeah, this is, a. I mean, that's the thing about pound cake. It has a lot of ingredients. In the old days, pound cake, in fact, was known for having a pound of each ingredient. And that's why it was called pound cake. You used to do a pound of flour, a pound of sugar, a pound of butter, uh, they have lessened the ingredients in the modern era, partly because with the modern processed ingredients, of course, we don't need quite as much as that. There we go. So we've got our uh, butter already because we are going to be creaming these things together. And now that we've done that, that means now we can uh, actually head over to the mixer here. Oh. There is, oh, you always forget one thing. Forgot to get out the paddle. There we go. Okay. Let's put this on. Yeah, I have, I have stories behind everything in my kitchen or indeed my whole home. And I'm actually quite proud of that. I've mentioned already the fact that uh, this mixer, I, in actually, I actually inherited this mixer, mixer from my dad. And um, even though he insisted, or actually, in fact, my mom also insisted that Dad had bought this mixer brand new, I have been skeptical of that just from the way this thing behaves. I do have to say it has been very reliable. I mean, I've actually it does a, uh, other than, come on, there we go. It actually does an excellent job with what it's uh, supposed to do. In fact, let's uh, turn it on and get started. The other thing about pound cake is you really don't want to mix it at a high speed. You actually want to gently mix the ingredients together. But um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, it does a good job, though. Uh, and actually, now that when, since I had it professionally cleaned last year, 
Uh, I have to say, I think it is actually uh, running a lot better, even though some people still consider this to be a lot more noisy than it's supposed to be. All right. And now that we've done that, we've got to continue with Z ingredients here. In fact, I can even turn this off for a moment while we continue with uh, the rest of the ingredients, because the next thing we have to do is crack five eggs carefully. This is what I mean. Don't rush. One. And look at that. We've got a little bit of eggshell in there already. <laughs> so, scoop out the shell. Notice you use... Come on, do that again. There you go. You use the shell to get out the shell. Makes it much easier that way. So that was one. Coming up. Try again. Two. Much better. That can be that open. Three. Coming up. One more. There we go. And as I... Oh, damn it. I think these must... These eggs must not be the best because they are not, the shells are not breaking as evenly as I had hoped. But so far, we're three out of five. Here comes number four out of five. Come on. All right, even though I crushed the yolk, at least I still managed to uh, get it all into the bowl. And finally, number five. And that's actually it for this batch of eggs. So... I can get a fresh batch after this. But nonetheless, there we go. And lo and behold, a little bit more shell got into it at the last moment. Gosh, color me surprised, shall we? It's right here. On, there it is. Come on. Do this right. There we go. Got it. Okay. Anyway, that takes care of that. That was the hard part, which means now back to the mixer. All right, just to be sure. Okay, good. We've got five eggs. Come on. One, two, three. That's the broken one. Four and five. A little bit more. All right, get out this spatula here. There we go. And I realize um, at this point, I think I have to stop it one more time because of the next step. Ugh, come on, do this right. There we go. I'm going to stop it one more time, and you will see why. Turn this whoops, wrong direction. Turn it down as we start zesting. Zest up. Zest a lemon. And it would help if I held this microplane in the right direction. There we go. So far, so good. We put in the zest of one lemon, and then we get to squeeze the lemon and put in about a teaspoon of lemon juice as well. Oh, I have to say, I've said before, I love zesting, not just because it puts a wonderful flavor, but even the smell or the scent is, is divine. I mean, this is a fresh lemon scent in the air here, thanks to this. And so, really, if you have a chance to actually uh, do this instead of putting lemon, what do they call it, lemon um, essence or lemon flavoring or whatever it is they have in the store, I would indeed recommend taking the time to do this because it's really not difficult. As you can see, it only requires a microplane, which is inexpensive. This microplane, in fact, is one of those kitchen items I've mentioned a number of times that I inherited from my mom. So I'm very glad to use that as well. Almost done already. Just a little bit more. And there are folks there who criticize me for going too slow in this process anyway. Oh, well, they're, I'm the one making this cake. They're not. Just a little bit more. 
All right, that looks about right. Now from here, let me quickly grab a knife, cut this in half. There we go. And we get to squeeze the lemon. Get about a tablespoon, no, maybe a teaspoon of lemon juice is all we need. Got to be careful not to get any seeds in here. All right, that looks about good. There we go. Yay, we are already almost done. So let's get back again to mixing. Rinse off my hands quickly. Grab a paper towel. All right, which means now we only have a couple more ingredients. One is about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I've already told my vanilla extract story. And then finally into this, we mix the mixed dry ingredients. And then we will have ourselves a pound cake batter. So yeah, this was really not difficult at all, even for me. <laughs> I mean, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Little by little. All right, there we go. Oh yes, one more ingredient. Actually, I did forget, this is why it's so thick. Buttermilk, one cup of buttermilk. And that is the last of it. There we are. Here comes the buttermilk. All right. Now we're finally getting somewhere. Break down the sides. And scrape off the rest of this. And look at that. We have ourselves hmm, pound cake batter. Which means over here, I get to clean up these uh, little pieces of trash that have accumulated. Get them out of the way. And then... Time to bring out the star of the shoe tonight. All right, we don't want to overmix the batter. We also don't want to take too long so the bat so that the batter settles. So, did it again. Take that down. And uh, oh yeah, that's right. Scrape this off. There we go. Because yeah, certainly don't want to miss out on any of this. Da, 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 da. This, of course, is the part where someone's going to have to lick the paddle. Oh, gee, what a shame. All right, but let me put this to the side for the moment. Because, as promised, time now, once again, for the star of the shoe. We've got a really big shoe for you tonight because I have to get out my gloves. Okay, and hello, JIR Finishes. Glad to be here. Glad to see you here, JIR Finishes. Because we are about to bring out a new cast iron pan. Ugh. Courtesy of Lodge Cast Iron. No, they didn't send it for me for free. I bought it. Here is the Lodge Large Loaf Pan. And uh, just like my other cast iron pans, I have preheated this to three, uh, 425 degrees, because this is probably my favorite method for, make, for baking cakes of this kind. I figured it works just fine with the fluted cake pan or the bunt cake pan. So let's give it a try with uh, the cast iron loaf pan. And that means you start spreading uh, Crisco all around the insides. And here's the thing, better to be sure to get it in the corners. 
That's one difference between this and the uh, cake and the fluted cake pan. This pan has corners, and I definitely have to be careful about that. Maybe a little bit more Crisco, and that should be all we need. On the side, certainly is easier to coat every inch of this than it is the uh, to do the fluted cake pan. I'll say that much too, which is a good sign. Maybe I should definitely should do more baking in the in this pan. Of course, I haven't said that yet. We shouldn't say that until we actually get a finished cake. But still, that sure didn't take long. Which means, now that we've done that, uh, folks who have seen us do this before, they should certainly know the drill. I want to be sure here. Did he say measurements on uh, the the, or the price of the loaf? Um, I unfortunately I did not. The uh, Lodge sells this uh, larger loaf pan on their website for thirty-five dollars. I hope that I hope that helps. I have been measuring out my ingredients though, and I've been uh, describing it as best as I can, which means just like we do a um, cornbread, we put the extra bit of oil into there. You know, I'm thinking this may actually be too much for the loaf pan, which means I may have to compensate for that. It fits fine in the um, in the fluted cake pan, but maybe this has less volume. Well, it seems to me that we are about to find out. Pull this into the front one more time. Oh, come on. I want to get this so that you folks can see it. There we go. That should do. And in we go. And I'm not sure if you can hear that or not, but it is sizzling as it hits the pan. And you know, I do think this might be a uh, good sized pan. I'm getting a majority of this cake batter in, I'll say that much. There we go, looking at it this way, I think we got just about all of it. There will be some yet that we can scrape out, but it looks like it took this uh, batch like a champ, in fact. Nice, okay, so there we go. Score one already for the Lodge Loaf Pan. There we go, try and kind of try to even it out a little bit. Hmm. Oh, that's good. And now for the last step, which means time to take you folks on another ride. We, I actually had another pan in the oven just in case we didn't, just in case we needed it, but I think we're doing good. So here we go. One, two, uh, Three, all right. Oh, and we are, it's in the oven. Okay, now, after all those times cooking with the large fluted cake pan, I managed to figure out that with the uh, pound cake in the, right, in the, in the uh, cake pan, we would keep it in the oven for 65 minutes. Here, the, with the different shape of the pan, I don't know. I'm um, thinking maybe we should start uh, checking this. What would you say? Like 50 to 55 minutes, in which case we still have plenty of time. It is 825, which means anywhere from like about quarter past nine or so, we will be able to uh, take this out of the oven. Okay. All right. Is there two different size large loaf pans or did I hear? No, you are correct. Uh, there was a standard size loaf pan that was produced both by Lodge and by Camp Chef. And here again is the Camp Chef loaf pan. I didn't have a chance to compare the uh, Lodge loaf pan to this, you know, because I was in a rush. I had to get that kit, that hot pan into the oven. It's quick. Oh, thank you. I have to turn the uh, temperature down. Duh. <laughs> My bad. Turn the temperature down to, come on, 350 degrees. Thank goodness. Otherwise, this would have been a burned cake. 
Okay, much better because yeah, that's the last part of this of this step that I do. Anyway, like I said, this is the um, cake pan from Camp Chef. The large cake pan is roughly the same size or maybe a fraction of an inch, a very small fraction of an, of an inch smaller than the Camp Chef cake pan. And I noticed in the comments already, people seem to say they prefer the Camp Chef cake pan. Maybe it's because it does certainly looks like a smooth inside on this uh, Camp Chef pan, doesn't it? And that's the thing about Camp Chef. Camp Chef does not get as much respect as they deserve. I mean, yes, it's true their pans are made in Asia. And that really, unfortunately, means a lot of people bash them just because their pans are made in Asia. But they make good quality cast iron. The uh, Camp Chef cast iron, uh, I would definitely say, could compare with Lodge in terms of quality. So uh, I would indeed uh, say that, you know, if you have a piece or two by Camp Chef in your collection, go ahead and use it. I say that about all Asian-made cast iron, but really, this is a good piece of cast iron, and I will gladly uh, give uh, Camp Chef credit where credit is due. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mercy B. That's what I'm talking about. This is the uh, Camp Chef uh, loaf pan. So if folks are in the market for a cast iron loaf pan, they may want to consider it. I got the Lodge loaf pan because it was bigger, yes, uh, which is lighter. Um, I'm, you know, um, I haven't really compared the regular size Lodge loaf pan to the uh, Camp Chef one. I might hazard a guess that the Camp Chef may be only a fraction uh, lighter, but not much. Anyway. Okay, however, having done that, I cooked my pound cake for 60 minutes. That was too long. It was a little brown on the side. Yeah, exactly, Jimmy Langford. So that's why I'm going to consider uh, taking this out and testing it for the first time in uh, just over 45 minutes, in fact, quarter past nine. All right. I like Camp Chef's Dutch oven because it has a thermometer hole. I don't have their camp oven, but but I think it's a nice feature. Yes, exactly. So they certainly know their, their stuff. I guess that's why they call themselves Camp Chef. However, now that that's in the oven and we have at least 45 minutes or so, it's time now to go and do what we usually do on a month on the first Wednesday of the of the month. And actually, I realize this is an opportunity as well, if I can stop getting this camera caught in the, um, there it is. If I can, uh, let's try to raise this up a little bit. I'm trying to be as fast as I can here. Appreciate your patience once again, folks. Because I have not had much of an opportunity to present to you my other cast iron rack. I mean, you know how I've been doing a uh, cast, you know, I've been, do, I've been uh, doing this Q&A session based on my uh, cast iron rack over there in the living room, but I really haven't, uh, but I haven't shown off my other cast iron rack, which has uh, the pieces that I generally use in the kitchen. As you can see here, I have uh, all of my enameled cast iron, cast iron, including most of my baking pans. Um, so yes, even though you're actually, I mean, I've shown quite a few of these pans uh, already in my videos, so they're definitely not unknown, but, um, this is, I think something that, uh, I haven't had really much of a chance to say because yes, I, yes, it's true. I actually have four cast iron racks here in my home. The three of them are over there in the living room, the two large racks, the smaller rack in between, which also has the, uh, big cauldron. And this is my kitchen rack. So, huh. um, what would you? What? Um, gee, uh, what was I saying about the other day about having, um, you know, a bad case of cast ironitis that only seems to be getting worse? Well, nonetheless, this is uh, what we have here, and I am certainly uh, here as well for anyone to ask questions about this. You can uh, about well, actually, you can ask it about my entire collection, not just these pans here. Feel free to uh, comment on anything that you would like here, and I and we will do our best to, <clears throat> to answer your questions. <coughs> Excuse me. 
if I can clear my throat, and uh, just that real, really have a fun conversation here. Handsome Stone, the other cast iron rack. Mobley does not care if you get more pans. <laughs> we won't judge here. We're all in the same aisle. Same iron-sided boat. Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, considering that we had a, a lot of wind today, maybe all of this cast iron helps to keep my home where it is and keeps it from blowing away. The hog head is nice and spooky when a cake came out. Something about the eyes. Oh, yes. As I said, we have seen a lot of these, including the, uh, including the uh, hog head or the uh, head cheese mold, because that's exactly what this is. A mold designed especially for making head cheese. And boy, isn't that a fancy, um, isn't that kind of like a unitasker, really, for one type, for a fancy mold like this? Although, like you said, we have made cakes in this as well. But yes, um, in, in fact, this is also believed to have been made by Lodge Cast Iron, and I believe Lodge has actually taken the credit for this pig head mold too, even though they're pretty well known even from uh, older days of history. But yeah, this thing here is uh, quite, quite thick and heavy, and yes, if you do make a uh, cake in this, you do end up with a pretty scary looking cake. So, yeah, that was one of those things, like I, most of them, I certainly couldn't say I resist. Was that, was that hog head made by Lodge? Yes, it was made by Lodge. It is unmarked, but it is indeed was indeed made by Lodge. There are a few of them out there that also have a USA mark on the forehead there. And, you know, I don't think people like that. Even though made in USA is all patriotic and stuff, I think they prefer the pig head without any markings like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need the Handy Dan, Hog Wild Cast Iron Restoration. Oh, yes. Uh, you see, this was a Christmas present several years ago, and I'm quite happy to have acquired this one. Yes, the famous BSNR Handy Dan Cornstick Pan, uh, which actually I think was a great way to make corn corn sticks and cornbread. I think they had a really good idea here, and it's unfortunate that their company went bankrupt only a few years after this was put into production, uh, because this is a really good idea, putting a handle on a corn stick pan. So, uh, but as a result, this has become something of a collector's item, yes. And uh, well, if you manage to score one of these, obviously, again, you have definitely got yourself a real treasure here. Uh, this notice has eight corn stick um, corn sticks rather than the typical seven. So that's uh, definitely something. Uh, one moment, hog wild. Yeah, I bought a five gallon bucket, but it didn't last as long as I wanted. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the Evapo rust, I guess. Um, I need the handy Dan. Um, somebody had. Oh yeah, Jim F had mentioned that. Um, somebody said the Turk head. There it is. Cynthia Wesley, let's see that Turks. Here it is. It's right here. Ah, this is, here we go, the Turks head pan. Uh, the interesting, th well, there are several interesting things about this, not the least of which it is gate marked. It's kind of hard to see, but if I hold it up in the light at the right angle, you should be able to see the gate mark, especially right up here. So, yeah, this is indeed an older, probably 19th century and unknown uh, Turk head pan. Um, this is not by Lodge. Lodge did make a Turk head pan in, the earliest, in their earliest days, but the Lodge pans in those days had an M shape on, those, uh, on their handles, and this one does not, which definitely demonstrates that this is not a Lodge pan. Uh, but I got this one here, I will not forget, came from the Brimfield Antique Show. And I've mentioned my uh, stories about the Brimfield Antique Show. This particular one, uh, in fact, you can see it in the video I did on Brimfield. The one, was it the one where, yes, it was. I think it was the one where I returned in 2021 after the pandemic was, uh, you know, the restrictions from the pandemic were being lit, lifted and Brimfield reopened. In that particular one, I found a you know a uh, one of the nicest and reasonably priced cast iron vendors I'd ever seen at um, Brimfield, and it was precisely for that reason that I uh, got that particular Turk head pan. Hmm. I have the twin, uh, Cynthia Wesley. Well, congratulations on that. Cast iron in IRL with Honey Jaddy Badger. 
I was offered a waffle iron style Wagner corn stick maker. Um, waffle iron, huh? Hmm. I was interested in until they said the price. Oh, I can only imagine what the price was. Just the fact that they said Wagner, I'm sure this is probably something that you would have needed to mortgage your house for, or at least your car. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Five gallons of evaporust will probably cost you $100. I was able to find it locally for $22 a gallon. Well, that's something. I can only hope you get a lot of use out of it, Rock Hunter. Yeah. Ever since I made that short video about a month or two ago, criticizing the cost of evaporust, I've gotten some flack for that. Largely because, as they say, evaporust really does a good job and you can actually use it indefinitely, kind of like the way you would use a lie tank. Uh, which is all great and everything if it wasn't so expensive. So, uh, yeah, that's why I'm still going to be sticking to the lye tank and the uh, vinegar bath myself. <laughs> Randy Duffy, I've got one with the M handle. Yes, if you have one with the M handle, that might be a lodge. Um, I am not a lodge expert the way some cast iron experts like to say. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, I am indeed... Um, well, I know that much that Lodge made um, a number of their baking pans with that M handle in their early days, including the infamous acorn pan. <laughs> yes, indeed. If you look at that one, you'll see it definitely has the uh, handle of, a, of an early Lodge. It is gate marked. All right, thanks. And yeah, lye based oven cleaner works well. Yes, exactly. All right, but nonetheless, I mean, uh, as I said, we're here. I mean, pretty much uh, so go ahead and name uh, pretty much anything on the rack, and let's see what we can say about it. I love the way um, – I don't want to brag, but <clears throat> I have stories about just about every piece of cast iron. In fact, just about everything in my home here, I have some kind of a story, and I uh, very much am very fond of telling those stories, and I can only hope that folks – find those uh, stories interesting. Evaporust takes off half pound of rust per gallon. Ooh, I use it in winter when garage is too cold for electrolysis. Uh, brag about your blessing. Well, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to brag because it just means that I simply tend to run off at the mouth and can keep talking and talking and talking. <clears throat> but I do love telling my stories. Like, for instance, uh, let me pull one off uh, right here for you, in fact. This is one that I've seen selling for a high price on eBay, the Griswold Square Egg Skillet. Except that this is actually, whoops, I didn't even show it right. The Griswold Square Egg Skillet, except that this is actually a Wagner. You know, this was made during at the uh, Sydney Foundry after uh, the Griswold Foundry had closed and uh, and uh, Griswold was acquired in the, oh, there's a shadow. Oh, yeah, that's the shadow of the camera, in fact. After Griswold was acquired uh, in the, uh, you know, in 1959, or was it 57? I think it might have been 57, in fact. Um, and we know that this is not an Erie Griswold, because all of Griswold's Erie pans actually said Erie, Pennsylvania. Also, it has the description of it, which is something that Wagner did on their pans. So this is definitely a Wagner Griswold. Nonetheless, this is, uh, one, this is one I have really for sentimental value, because in fact, my grandmother had this uh, had a pan exactly like this. She had the, the square egg skillet, and she did like using it to make square eggs for us every once in a while. Uh, that pan, unfortunately, went to another relative when my grandmother passed on. Uh, but I had to actually find this, and I gave it to my mom as a uh, as a present in mem in remembrance of you know of her mom of my grandmother. And then when, well, when my mom passed away, I inherited this one back. So, yeah, this is definitely one of those heirlooms that I have no intention ever of uh, selling. Are there a few versions of the square egg? Mine has uh, square spelled wrong, for instance. I have heard that, yes, apparently there were a few genuine square egg pans made with typos like that. Um yeah, generally, I would say that chances are if you see a square egg pan, it's probably genuine. I mean, while they do have, while there are known 
replicas and counterfeits of Griswold pins out there in the wild. Usually, or no, I should say almost always, they are very crudely made and very easy to spot. Something as small as misspelling the word square, uh, I don't believe that would indicate that this is actually a, um, a, uh, uh, a counterfeit. Uh, I know, for instance, uh, doesn't Mudbrooker have one of those counterfeits, the Griswolo pen or something like that? I, I forget. You'll have to ask him uh, the details about that. All right. A friend gifted me one. Yeah, I can see the ghost mark clearly. There's a ghost mark on this? Well, in that case, um, you are seeing better than I am because I am not seeing a ghost mark on it, unless you're talking about one of your own pens. Uh, and if you are, well, please feel free to do so. Hi, right. I have one just like it, but the Griswold logo is a ghost. Oh, that's what you're talking about with the ghost mark then, I guess. Uh, mine says 129. What's the difference? Um, again, uh, this one here says 53. And the difference, I can only wonder if, in fact, it might have been a mold or a model number or some other kind of production model number. Um, I'm not sure how Griswold marked its... Uh, Pens and numbered them over the years. The best price I've found on a Vapo Rust cleaner is, is at Harbor Freight. I don't use it, but I have seen it there. All right. Griswold has a ghost mark on mine as well, says Dan uh, Reedy. Uh, is that a BSR six wedge cornbread pan, cast iron fanatic? As a matter of fact, yes, it is. Uh, one of those lucky scores I was able to make when I was out uh, antiquing, and I believe, in fact, I found this one in uh, Kentucky when I was on my way down to the uh, National Cornbread Festival. But again, you know, it's like this is one of those things when you see it, you got to grab it as long as it's not too expensive. And it wasn't. It was uh, good and affordable enough that I felt it was worth getting just so that I'd be able to have the uh, famous uh, six wedge corn stick pan. And yes, indeed, there have been arguments over the history of this, uh, especially among BSR collectors. Namely, uh, the question, of course, is when or if this uh, six-wedge cornbread skillet was phased out at some point. Some say uh, that this was actually produced the entire length of uh, BSNR's history. I disagree. I believe it was phased out. And my reasoning for it is simply because all of the uh, six-wedge pans had a pat pending mark on the bottom. None of them ever had a made in USA mark. Over time, they eventually phased out the uh, patent pending mark on the uh, more famous uh, eight wedge uh, corn cornbread skillet. Oh, this one is also a patent pending, which I got especially because I felt it was likely made in 1967. But yeah, uh, over time, they did, in fact, phase out the U.S. made in USA mark, and they did finally produce, um, no, I'm sorry, patent pending mark, and they did produce corn stick pans, corn bread skillets, rather, with the uh, made in USA mark. But they never produced the six wedge with the uh, made in USA mark. So I would tend to think that this was probably phased out. And I would have to say, well, they must have been phased out at probably around the time, if not before, that they finally phased out the patent pending mark. That's my theory. I do not have documentation to prove it. But on the other hand, I have also not seen documentation that can prove that this was, in fact, produced throughout the entire lifespan of uh, BSNR. When I first started my website and people started using this as a reference, including eBay sellers, I noticed, yeah, I made a mistake when I first put up my website. Initially, I had originally said that this was only produced like for a, a matter of months or so, or maybe a year or two after 1967. And I was wrong about that. I've long since corrected that mistake on my website. That was several years ago I fixed that. For the brief period of time that I said that, some eBay sellers were mirroring my website and saying that, yeah, this is a rare stick pan, rare six wedge pan only produced for several months. But since I changed my website, well, I'm pleased to say that you, you don't see them saying that on uh, eBay anymore. 
<laughs> so yes, I am glad to have been able to correct that mistake. I apologize for that mistake. And because I would much rather tell the truth as best as I can. All right. Uh, I, I'm going to try the vinegar bath one more time. I was told they only made it for about two years because sales were bad on the six wedge. That is my opinion as well, because if the sales were good, they would have kept selling it, obviously. On, I mean, it's well known that, and even legendary that, the, uh, that this was uh, these eight wedge corn stick pan, cornbread skillet was known for being one of the greatest selling pans of all time. This was bs and R's highest selling pan ever. And it, and it really, it did make this uh, kind of a pan, a household one. But yes, the six wedge corn stick, uh, corn bread and skillet did not sell as well. And yes, I, that is also why I feel that they did phase it out. I'm not sure if it was a couple of years. I would tend to think it took longer than that, maybe several years. But it, uh, but I'm, I am fairly certain that it was, in fact, uh, uh, phased out. Look for a square chicken. Uh, the Griswold 129 square egg skillet made by Griswold before they sold to Wagner. By the way, we still have about half an hour to go before those uh, before that cake comes out of the oven, so we're doing pretty good here. All right. Going through uh, the listing here, um, let me see. I can see way to actually... Um, if we look way down here, for instance, we could see a much rather more standard corn stick pan, a uh, BSNR, if I can get it off the hook, come on, there we go. This, of course, is a uh, typical BSNR corn stick pan, and this particular one comes from their Red Mountain series. You can tell because it has large, apparently handwritten letters. However, as far as I can tell, they kept doing these handwritten style letters on their Red Mountain pans for a long time, long after the uh, handwritten uh, BSR skillets were phased out. So this could be anywhere from like the uh, 1920s, 1930s, maybe 1940s, maybe even 1950s. It's hard to say. Nonetheless, it is, of course, a nice uh, corn stick pan. And yeah, I know it seems like everybody has at least one of these. And if you go to any flea market, you will almost certainly find at least one of these. So yes, what I remember is I got this one for 10 bucks at a flea market in uh, outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania that has uh, since closed down, unfortunately. What I also know is that during the Red Mountain days, they actually produced four different models of this cornbread corn stick pan I have only seen one. They did a uh, much smaller version of this, and they also did a much larger version of this. Even though it was still seven, uh, even though it was still seven corn sticks, the actual corn sticks in the pan itself was much larger in size. That was the seven L corn stick pan, and I would indeed like to come across one of those. I'm not sure, maybe just because it's big. But I would indeed like to uh, try making cornbread in that kind of a pan. I do believe Steve, Steve Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, he actually has a 7L. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I should check his channel again for more in information about the 7L. Let's get this back on here. Oh, careful. Damn it. Don't wanna, I don't want these things to scrape together here. Okay, there we go. All right, where was that market in Harrisburg? Across the river in Le Moines, Pennsylvania, has a nice antique mall. Um, this was a pretty famous uh, flea market in uh, the Harrisburg area, and it was called Saturday's Market. Uh, they were really big, and apparently they were one of the biggest uh, flea markets in the entire area. Uh, I had indeed been there a few times, and uh, they were pretty impressive. I did find a couple of things there. Um, it was at that flea market that I once saw a uh, 19th century skillet, and I believe it was, in fact, I think it might have even been a 12-inch skillet. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, by Marietta, you know, the Marietta uh, Foundry of Pennsylvania. That's most famous for Gatemark Dutch ovens. But they, I actually saw a Marietta skillet. 
And no, I didn't get it. Uh, because as I've been saying all these years, I don't need more skillets, but it was, but it was impressive nonetheless, but it was called Saturday's market. However, they are in fact closed for good. I saw a news story about it, um, in which they, I think it had to do with legal reasons, but the flea market just simply closed down. And so unfortunately it is gone. All right. Just bought one for $5 at Goodwill State College. Yeah, you're talking about the corn stick pan, obviously. So, yeah. I have a 7L corn stick pan. I have not cooked in it heavy. Well, congratulations to you, Jimmy Lankford. Boy, you definitely have yourself a, a score there. That's for sure. What's the story on that big pan that looks like it's dented? I'm trying to see which one you're talking about that looks like it's dented. 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 Um. Big pan. Are you referring to this one here on the very bottom? This one here, in fact, is the stove, uh, thirteen quart Dutch enameled uh, Dutch oven. So yeah, that is uh, definitely not dented. I can reassure you of that. Uh, I can't think of any pans here, in fact, that are dented. Um, there's a. Uh, this is an enameled saucepan that I only got like maybe about a couple of months ago now. And I do need to find a uh, better lid for it. This is the Lodge 7-quart enameled uh, Dutch oven. Uh, let's see. Now I need to get out and clean it. On the top. Hanging on the top. Hanging on the top. Hanging on the top? Um, let me uh, bring this up here. I'm not sure which one you are referring to. I don't have anything hanging on the top. Uh, what I do have on the top uh, is the waffle iron, the Stover waffle iron that I uh, acquired last year and have been doing my best to get use out of. Oof. Also here on the top, I have a couple of uh, sad irons, one by Sheffield uh, that I don't really have a lot of information about. On the other hand, this one folks know pretty this name pretty well the even though i'm pronouncing it wrong the waypack or wepac or but i think it is waypack now i've been corrected the waypack uh sad iron so yes i use that one fairly regularly when cooking as well and i do my best to make certain of that okay next round square pan um, oh, you must be talking about this one. No, this is not actually a skillet. In fact, uh, you'll, you'll recognize it when I show it to you. Here it is. The Lodge Skull Pan that they came out with only about a year or so ago. And this was, again, one of those things that I uh, acquired because, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't resist it. Uh, and so far, I've used it each Halloween. Uh, but yes, uh, this is indeed the Lodge Skull Pan, and one that I have very much enjoyed uh, using. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a yeah. These are various baking trays by John Wright right here as well, and I am keeping the uh, Lodge Skull Pan up here as well. All right, like your sad irons, I've got about fourteen different ones. Yeah, they are can they can become quite a, addictive in themselves, can't they? I thought about making some corn dogs in that pan. Are you talking about the skull pan or the uh, corn stick pan? Because you're not the first one to make uh, corn dogs in this corn stick pan. A number of people have, and I would definitely say, well, let me bring this down again so that you can see it. A number of people have made corn dogs in this uh, corn stick pan, and I would definitely say do it. Um, although you might have to cut your hot dogs in half so that they would fit. But I would indeed say give it a try and you will likely uh, enjoy the results. I thought about making some corn dogs. Yes, exactly. So they're not seeing they're not seeing the dents or, or a pig face maybe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you're probably right if you're talking about the pig head mold. Yes, we had indeed shown this one, but yes, this is the pig head mold right here. So uh, I'm wondering if maybe my lighting is not the uh, greatest at this angle here. All right. 
Uh, no Papa at all this week. Miss Cindy must be really sick. Well, best of luck. Yeah, and I hope he's doing okay. So, uh, Hog Wild, I have one 7L. I need another one. <laughs> maybe you should sell, maybe you should sell it, but we'll find out. All right. Uh, like your sad irons. Okay. Uh, yeah, exactly. The pig face. Okay. Do you have any vintage glass or aluminum lids to share? I love my aluminum drip top number eight skillet lid. You know, um, I'm afraid I do not. My aluminum collection is currently limited to two items and a few pieces of, uh, you, of, uh, kitchen you, cooking utensils as well. One is the, uh, Wagner aluminum Dutch oven that, uh, We've shown that uh, I've used quite a few times, and I really enjoy it. This one, on the other hand, I found just last year, and I intend, uh, and I got it as a stock pot, no less. A big, huge aluminum stock pot. So, yeah, complete with an aluminum lid. So, uh, yeah, this is one. This, again, was, was a flea market find last year. Uh, again, this is, if you need a really big stock pot, then definitely this is the way to go. Uh, here it is. Here's the, um, label. My understanding is this is actually made in England, I do believe. And this actually somehow managed to find its way to the, uh, United States, if I remember right. So, yes, this is my stock pot. Ugh. This is the type of thing you might consider deep frying a turkey in, for instance. Well, a small turkey. All right. Um, I did a video on my channel uh, for you non-Ohians on how to pronounce Waypack and, and Piqua. <laughs> Piqua. Oh, well, I'm going to have to take a look at that then, cast uh, Honey Badger, because I definitely would like to see that. I need another one to make 3D corn sticks and corn dogs. I don't sell everything. I have a large collection of cast iron I would never sell. Oh, yep. You've got cast ironitis for sure. That's no question about that. Terry Sinchev. Hi, I'm at my brother's for dinner tonight. I'm not good at this on my phone. Well, that's, well, just thank you for dropping by and saying hi, Terry Sinchev. Thank you very much for uh, being here. I very much appreciate you uh, showing up. All right, we are getting on here. It is uh, 8.57, so yeah, uh, time is passing a little slower than it usually would, but that's not, but that's okay. It just means, oh, I am indeed just beginning to smell that cake in the oven too. You know, I should probably actually quickly take a look at it, um, if you don't mind, while I head over to the oven, turn on the light. Oh, man, holy cow. Oh man, um, let me see if I could try make, taking a picture of this thing, if at all possible. Wow! All right, um, I'm gonna get this. It's, it's difficult to do, you know, because of the, um, you know, be, well, partly because of all the dirt on my oven as well, but still. No, I don't want to do that. Let's get a photo. There we go. Uh, I don't want to get mad. Uh, let's try this. Okay, now that we've done that, let me show you how that cake is turning out so far. Oh, man. Um, let me bring this up as fast as I can. Here we are. Check this out. That's the cake that's in the oven right now. So that thing is rising, well, like a loaf. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, I am definitely going to have to check that, uh, but I still have about 15 minutes or so to wait. But, man, I, I think that is looking uh, pretty nice so far. So, uh, that, well, off to a good start with this loaf pan, that's for sure. Hmm. You ever think of getting a sportsman's grill? I'm, lo I'm looking hard for that one. Um, you know, I actually got one. I, you know, in Walmart clearance a few years ago, and it turned out to be broken. So, uh, and I ended up uh, returning it to Lodge Cast Iron, in fact. So, um, I need one to make uh, 3D corn sticks. I'm I'm at my brother's for dinner tonight. Okay, you ever think of getting? We said that already. I'm betting that cake is pretty big. Yeah, I think you're right. So, whew, I am really looking forward to uh, how this may well uh, turn out. Although we still have about another 15 minutes because, of course, I have to be sure that that cake is, uh, you know, 
done on the inside as well as the outside. So just got to take my time. All right. I'm betting. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Going through my rack again. As I said, this is the smaller rack. Um, because, again, I've been showing off my uh, larger rack uh, yeah, every, all the time. And, yeah, why not? I, I'm quite proud of how all that has turned out. Um, oh, yes, here's something I think I can mention as well. Ugh. Several different kinds of baking pans, all from Lodge. Let me put this down because this is heavy. And let's start with... Ugh. The Lodge Pie Plate, which uh, came out when they uh, first released their uh, baking collection. And, yeah, I couldn't resist that because I did need a good pie plate. It's got a nice, you know, it's it's low, and it's got a nice uh, angle to it. So, in fact, uh, after, the, after I made that uh, cheesecake earlier this week, <laughs> uh, I've been tempted to use this into, and make another cheesecake. I'm hoping maybe sometime in the next couple of weeks I can do so. This, again, is the uh, Lodge uh, pie plate, which is it's essentially a skillet in the shape of a pie plate, as opposed to the other piece like this that Lodge has been producing for a number of years, and that is namely the skillet lid for their uh, double Dutch oven, which also has functioned just fine as a cast iron pie plate as well as a skillet in its very own right. So even though there are two models of this, they are both really good. Uh, I've made pies in both of these, and they both do an excellent job. So I certainly don't have any complaints about uh, either one. <laughs> All right. I'm betting the cake is pretty big. We said that already. All right, I got the first model last year, but had to drive over an hour to get it. Don't see them often here. I'm glad I found it. Everyone can appreciate a nice rack. That's tough to say without snickering. Yeah, exactly. What's the weight capacity of the shelves? You know, I'm one of the reasons why I got these wire racks is I'm told that they've got an excellent uh, weight capacity as well. The really big ones I have are supposed to have like about 300 pounds per shelf. Since this is maybe half the size of that big rack, that's still, we're talking like maybe 150 pounds per shelf. So, I mean, the, whoever designed these wire racks is was really a genius, and I hope they died rich. Um, and I hope their company lives forever. Because, yeah, these wire racks are so useful. Uh, I have never had any problem with my uh, cast iron getting too heavy for, for uh, these wire racks, and hopefully it never will. Although, on the other hand, I'm, as I've said enough times, I'm trying not to be a hoarder. All right. Hmm. Everyone, all right. yeah, they are nice and durable. And at least the smaller ones are not that expensive either. You can get the smaller ones at Home Depot or uh, Target or uh, Lowe's, I should say. So they are actually fairly easy to get. Yeah, you can even get them at Wally World. <laughs> All right, going through here. Oh, yeah, how could I forget this one? Uh, I've talked enough times about the uh, Lodge fluted cake pan. I talked about it earlier th this evening, in fact, the one that I usually make pound cakes. And then there is this other cake pan that I have uh, used several times and I'm going to continue using because this is, again, was a score that I'm uh, quite proud of. This is, in fact, a uh, cast iron cake pan likely made in Europe. Uh, according to the uh, experts on the Cast Iron Bunt Bakers Anonymous group, this is apparently part of a series. Uh, we've got, this one is called the Monarch, and there was another one as well called, I think it was called the Crown or Royal or something like that. Uh, but yeah, this one here is called the Monarch, and it's a design that uh, really makes it unique, and, you, and I really like the shape of the cakes that this thing bakes here. This is very, very slightly smaller than the uh, Lodge uh, fluted cake pan, so uh, it takes a little bit less batter. But on the other hand, well, what can I say? Again, it bakes a wonderful cake, so I'm uh, quite happy to uh, 
of uh, found this one at the Brimfield Antique Show, nonetheless. Nothing wrong with being a cast iron hoarder. Well, I have seen cast iron collections out there that put mine to shame. And I've decided I am never going to have a collection that big. I mean, it's tough enough for me to uh, simply work my way through this collection here. But I'm doing my best. That's one reason why I do, I do these YouTube videos, so that I have an excuse to keep using these pans again and again and to rotate my way through the collection. Ten minutes to go. It is five past nine. Nice. There's one on eBay for 150 plus about a 100 for shipping. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, partly because that one might actually be shipped all the way from Europe, perhaps. Um, nonetheless, the uh, cast iron bunt pan market was, is interesting and it's really in a state of flux these days since lodge re-released the uh cast their own fluted cake pan and this is the second time they've done so the uh the market for cast iron cake pans has not crashed but it has definitely been reduced to something of a more affordable level and that's a good thing because uh even though ebay is still overpriced at least these uh those cast iron cake pans are not as overpriced as they used to be. You can get a vintage cast iron cake pan these days for about $100 on eBay, which for a number of people means that is actually affordable. Whereas before that, um, those same uh, bunt pans on eBay would often be going for $200, $300, $400 regardless of the condition. So yeah, Lodge re-releasing its cake pans really helped to uh, even out the market. At least I think so. Uh, I have the Hoot from that Bunt Cake series from Europe. It's the smaller of the series. Well, that's interesting, Honey Badger. <laughs> I'd like to find the Oak in that European Bunt Pan series. Yeah, there's this one giant Bunt Pan that's something like 24 cups in size or so. I've seen it a couple of times. And that is one that is tempting, yes, but it's definitely out of my price range. But, I mean, having a huge, gigantic cake pan like that, huh, boy, you can only imagine the occasion you wouldn't have to uh, make a cake of that size, to make a cake of that size. <laughs> we just made a hummingbird cake in the lodge, fluted cake pan last night. Nice rocket caver. I'm hoping that you posted some pictures because I wouldn't mind seeing them. All right, getting on with it. Okay, I've been working my way from uh, top to bottom. I've mentioned already the uh, uh, the waffle iron. I've mentioned the skull the skull pan. I've mentioned the um, the pig head pan and the corn stick pans and the cake pan. Uh, let me see. One I have not mentioned yet. Maybe I uh, yeah, is. Well, it's an interesting one. This is another one of the early pieces from my collection. I've had this one for more than 10 years, and yet um, it, I'm pre pleased with how uh, new it still looks. This is a cast iron casserole pan, an enameled pan uh, that I use especially for making lasagna. And that was, in fact, why I, uh, why I got it in the first place. I still remember early in my... Uh, days of uh, collecting cast iron, I had the urge of finding a cast iron lasagna pan because I wanted to make lasagna in it. And I went out in search of one in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I actually came, found it the same day I went out looking for it, believe it or not. Even though this is in fact Asian made, it has no logo on it at all, which is how I know it's Asian made. But, uh, and it's also very heavy, but I've done my best to keep it in good condition. And so I can, and this is definitely a cast iron pan that I'm still proud to have and proud to use because not only have I made lasagna in this pan, this has also been used for making, yeah, brownies and um, oh, Dutch babies and um, other, uh, yeah. And I have made a couple of cakes in this pan as well. So I am definitely still doing my best to uh, get my, to get as much use out of my collection as, uh, as possible. Uh, handsome Stone, I want one of the Polish fluted pans. I have a 24 cup swirl pan. Wow, paid too much and don't pick and don't care. The person who I bought it from sold a cathedral design for about 3k. Holy cow, 
Yush. You know, I have a feeling I know who you're talking about. He's a guy who has uh, sold pants to quite a few of the people on the Cast Iron Bunt Bakers pan, uh, group. Uh, apparently, he gets his pans imported from Europe, and he actually sells them at a somewhat decent price, if high, of course. But, uh, yeah, I understand that he's got a, a collection that you really, um, it's hard to believe that he, that, that many uh, pans exist, never mind that that one guy has them. So, uh, last weekend, I picked up the Alphabet John Wright pan and an, and an enameled, unmarked Wagner cornstick pan. Nice. Congratulations on that. And let me see if I can dig that one out. Move the skull pan out of the way. Also, I have to move out of the way the, um, the Santa Claus pan. Uh, this is also from John Wright. But I know which one you're talking about. And that is one that is right down here. Ugh. Here is the alphabet pan. You know, I think this one in particular must have been coated because you notice how it still has a gray look to it. I've definitely seasoned it and I've done my best to uh, bake in it. And yet it still has this uh, feel look that suggests that it might actually have a coating on it. But yes, here is the uh, alphabet pan. And you know, now that I am, uh, I've recently befriended a uh, lovely lady who actually has five kids. I'm. I really should start getting more use out of these kind of pans, out of the, uh, ugh, out of the animal cracker pan, and out of the uh, skull pan, and out of the. Uh, oh man. <laughs> all and the gingerbread house pan. I've got all of these uh, John Wright pans, and now that I'm fortunately able to cook for kids again. I should be able to, uh, well, do just that. And I certainly like that. Seven for Al for their alphabet and six for the Wagner. Yeah, I believe that. Your video on the uh, on the spice cookies. Oh, you cooked the, you made those cookies. Well, I'm glad you like them. I'll, yeah, I, that's really the part that I enjoy just about more than anything else. When I hear that somebody has made one of my recipes and they actually liked it. Uh, that I find very flattering and I can only thank you so much. And I do appreciate criticism as well if there are ways that folks think that it could be improved. All right, we are getting down to it. Skull pan makes fun cornbread. I wonder if you could make jello jigglers in the alphabet pan. I'll bet you could because, yes, you know, you if the pan is seasoned well enough, yes, you can put cast iron in the oven. Uh, in the oven. You can put cast iron in the refrigerator. So, however, I do believe we are getting down to that time here. Ah, so let's move back over. This, this is what I get for uh, just that, for filming on no budget. Um, because I've got, a, again, this cable keeps getting stuck here. But it's time once again to bring this uh, camera down to a reasonable angle. And see what it's like. Let me see. I think I can bring this. Yeah, I can definitely bring this down more, in fact. So, we'll go just a little bit more. There we go. Now, that is more like it. Because we've got a nice view here. And with that, I do believe it's time. I wonder if you could make jello jigglers. Yeah, here we go. Yes, exactly. I better get out a skewer too to test that pan. All right, but or test that cake. But well, either it's done or it's not. I know I'm fond of saying stupid things like that, but well, it's the truth. Here we go. Let's open up the oven. Holy cow. Let's bring this out. I don't think it's done yet. No, it is not done yet. It is still jiggling on top. But look at that. Oh, I might have ruined it already. But yeah, holy cow. However, well, no, this thing is definitely not done yet. I can, I can even feel it. I'd better get this back in the oven right away. But it sure looks nice, doesn't it? Okay, back in. All right, 
Um, maybe about another 10 minutes, or at least I certainly hope so. We'll get this back into the oven right now. Oh, no. I mean, I could see this thing was jiggling on top. It definitely was not done on the inside yet. Considering that, uh, again, in the fluted cake pan, I had to do the uh, pound cake for 65 minutes, and here it's only been about 45 minutes. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe another 10 minutes is not out of the uh, way, not out of the uh, question. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I, I hung up the fallout shelter sign uh, pretty much as soon as I moved in. Right over there by the uh, out by the uh, back door, in fact. All right. So getting down to it, uh, might as well bring out once again the Camp Chef loaf pan. And while we're at it, I'm thinking as well of another piece that I managed to acquire. In fact, when I was on my road trip to uh, or from the National Cornbread Festival, because I got this at that gigantic flea market in Sevierville. Uh, those of you who know about the Sevierville flea market know what I'm talking about. But it was there at the Sevierville flea market that I came across this. And yeah, this was something that caught my eye uh, when I first saw it on the internet. Um, and it was, and I thought this was ridiculously cute, in fact. So uh, this was one of those things that I would have liked to have. And so when I actually saw it at that flea market with a $15 price, no less, you better believe I jumped to get this. So yeah, this thing sure looks like a tiny little ham boiler, doesn't it? Uh, if you look on the, and, and let me compare this again to the loaf pan. See, now you get an idea of what, the, what size this is. And if, on the bottom of this, in fact, it has a mark, uh, HB84. Now, because of this, I thought this might have actually been from Lodge. I'm told there was actually a small foundry in the, tennis, in the uh, Kentucky area um, that actually made this pan, and it was a small independent foundry. And I don't have the name memorized. I don't have it off the tip of my tongue. I would have to do some research again, but this is actually not Lodge. However, it is definitely vintage, and I would say it comes from likely probably about the early to mid-20th century. You know, it's got this interesting casting flaw here on the side that looks like a crack, but it's definitely not because you, you can see that there's no sign of any flaws on the inside at all. So... And yes, I have actually baked in this as well, even though it's got such an odd shape to it that it would be really difficult to make a bread in this that would actually stand up. <laughs> okay. I've made your 500 degree double pan chicken. Oh, nice. Your spice cookies, your giant skillet cookie. Well, thank you very much, Handsome Stone. As I said, those are very nice words. And again, I can only thank you so much for that. Uh, but yeah, because, well, again, the cooking really, in the end, the cooking is the most important part. I just happened to get bit by the cast iron bug in a bad way. And so I've been more than happy to try doing as much in cast iron as I can. And well, what you see on my YouTube channel and on my website and on Facebook are the results of it. I'm hoping at least I have been able to make even a small contribution to uh, the cast iron community with things like the 500 degree chicken, whether it's the Dutch oven chicken or the cat or the iron, the cast iron iron chicken, or in, even with this way of making cakes in cast iron or how I'm preheating the pan. Uh, all of these, I will say, I mean, I will at least take partial credit for uh, come, for <coughs> developing these methods myself. They are based on other methods. Yes, this method for cake for making a cake is in fact based on the uh, very popular way of making cornbread. Um, but I applied it to a cake and I think the results have been fantastic. So uh, as I said, it's more, I'm more than, I'm really flattered when I hear that people have actually tried my recipes, but enough talking about myself here. All right, 
I've done the big cookie, but big beans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am so proud of my Boston baked beans as well. Again, there are some there are some recipes out there that I would very much like to be known by. And if people remember me from my Boston baked beans recipe, and that that is something, as I said, would make me feel very good even after I go to my rest. <laughs> Okay, ham boiler, American broiler and foundry country uh, com uh, company. Well, that's interesting. And thank you very much, R.T. Scott. Uh, I was under the impression that there was actually a small foundry with a different name. But as I said, I can always research it again. So, hmm. uh, rocket caver. Well, thank you again uh, regarding the baked beans. But other than that, well, as I said, you know, we only have a few more minutes left for the cake, but. Uh, otherwise we have still been talking cast iron tonight. And as I said, I will, uh, I will gladly put in a good word for camp chef because they do indeed make quality cast iron, including this loaf pen here, despite the fact that I have not given it as much use as I certainly should. And yet here I am, I bought another loaf pen. I don't know because it was bigger, but I'm you, but the excuse I'm using is well, number one, to make this pound cake tonight. I mean, because as I said, I wanted to make a traditional loaf-shaped pound cake. I mean, as much as I enjoy making uh, pound cakes and other cakes as well in the fluted cake pan, um, again, I wouldn't mind making a traditional pound cake, which is uh, what I hope this will be. Uh, and then, of course, there among the many things I have yet to really get serious about, about one of them is bread baking. So if I have a loaf pan, I'm hoping that'll be an incentive for me to do more baking and bread making. Because, yeah, that is yet another um, hobby for a lot of people that I really have yet to seriously get into. But, <clears throat> well, there is always time. Uh, by the way, you know we Southerners will eat beans just because, and rice is always a hit in Louisiana. So we're talking beans and rice. <laughs> Beans and rice, yeah. Boy, it's been a while since I've had beans and rice. I should definitely need to make a nice pot of that as well. Uh, checking the cake at this point. Oh, man, that thing is still looking good. And I'm, well, I can only hope it's uh, becoming much more solid at this point. You know, you were talking about the pound cake getting browned. I will have to say this does look like it is getting browned. And yet, again, when I checked it 10 minutes ago, it was definitely not done on the inside. However, I'm hoping 10 minutes of progress may help. So let's get this over to here because it's convenient enough to sit in that pan like that. Uh, I'm going to be patient and I'm going to wait another two minutes. It's 8, 9.23 right now. Uh, I'm doing my best, Randy Maple, that's for sure. Uh, unless you're talking about another person here on the chat. Uh, but, well, I mean, that's why, as I said, I have these cast iron Q&A sessions uh, every, uh, when, every, the, first, um, mon the first Wednesday of uh, every month, especially as a way to kind of like take it easy. Although I did still end up making a cake tonight, too. <laughs> but, yeah, things are crazy. Things have been pretty crazy the last week or so, partly for personal reasons, but also, uh, well, I'll say it again. The eclipse is coming on Monday, and yeah, I'm all excited for it because I've been preparing for this really for the last seven years. <laughs> then yeah, so it's finally going to happen, and the initial long-range forecast for Monday in my area is giving about a 20% chance of rain, but that is still a long-range forecast that could change. It could change for the better, um, and we will, we will see how it all turns out. Uh, looking at the forecast now, for instance, the forecast for Monday, has, holy cow, the uh, forecast at this moment for Monday has been reduced to about 9%. So things are looking good weather-wise for Monday, that's for sure. We can only hope that it stays that way. In fact, I think it will move out to uh, a different area closer to the area of the eclipse and see what it looks like there. Uh, over there, the, the uh, forecast for Monday has seems to have increased. Hmm. 
All right. Well, we will still be optimistic. We're not going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, get my hopes down yet. Okay. Nonetheless, back to business here. Okay. But now here we go. Uh, I'm driving two hours to be in full totality. You know, best of luck, Mr. John 420 as well. Okay. But here comes attempt number two at this cake. Let's see how it turns out. And then after that, of course, I'm going to have to wait another 20 minutes to actually get it out of the pan. Oh, you know, this is looking much better. This is looking better. Well, what do you think of that, folks? What I think is that it is time to give it a skewer and see what happens. Carefully. Uh-oh. You know what? It is still a long way from done. Back in the oven it goes. I'm actually surprised. Well, maybe not too surprised. As I said before, the fluted cake pan was 65 minutes. We are now at 55 minutes. So we've got maybe another 10 minutes to go. And besides, it doesn't look like it's jiggling on top this time. So I would say that it has actually made some progress. Just got to be patient. So it looks like even though I'm using the loaf pan rather than the uh, fluted cake pan, it's starting to look like it's uh, still going to take about 65 minutes. Well, we will do what we can. All right. Most of the eclipse path is supposed to be cloudy. Yes, exactly. So uh, we will see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've got to be up. We've got to be optimistic. I mean, it's all depends on the whims of Mother Nature, of course. And besides, it's still a long range forecast. It could still change. So that means that was a lot of batter. Well, there is that too. I'm hoping. Yeah, maybe I used too much batter. I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I, where I am right now in Binghamton, in fact, is going to be really, they're going to be having a lot of something like about 95% totality right here in Binghamton. So that is actually pretty darn impressive as well. But I, I mean, I really decided that, you know, I might as well go all the way, especially since it's only about a three hour drive from where, we, from where I am and take my chances and see if we can't get into the uh, actual 100% totality, because like you said, this is going to be a once in a lifetime experience. The next time we see a uh, total eclipse here in the United States, is not going to be for 20 years, the year 2044. So, um, well, okay. On the locations, uh, I'm going to see what the forecast is now, even though it's a long-term one yet for Erie, Pennsylvania. And according to this, Erie, Pennsylvania is showing again about a 40% chance of rain. Well, as I said, it's still Wednesday. I mean, we still have five days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We still have five days to go. That forecast can still change. So um, no need to uh, panic at this point. We have two parks near the Niagara River. They figured about 10,000 people will be there. Yeah, for that reason, Val, that's one reason why I'm not sure I want to go to a large area like Niagara Falls because I don't want to be in the midst of 10,000 people. Uh, I, would, I would be completely happy just being in a, uh, you know, in a park in a small town that happens to be in the area of totality um, because that's all I really need. You know, all I'm going to be doing is doing my best to try to get some pictures and video of, of the eclipse and watch it. I don't need to be in a place with rock bands, you know, and the radio DJs and, oh yeah. And here we are having our eclipse contest. And when the, uh, and when the eclipse becomes total, we will announce the winner of our special 100 pack condom set or some dumb thing like that. So no, <laughs> I would rather, I'm not going to uh, go for the large crowds for precisely that reason. Hmm. All right. Lots of crowds expected here too. 
BCBR us two, four minutes plus for us. Nice. Anyway, other than that, Cynthia Wesley, I own only one number nine, a Martin stove in range. Uh, I have one number nine, and that is my number nine unmarked Wagner uh, chicken fryer, which, as a matter of fact, I need to throw in the lie tank. Uh, a couple of my pans, it seems like the seasoning is peeling off, and I definitely need to strip them and re-season them. So that's going to be a project I'm going to do very soon. Maybe within the next few days, maybe even after the uh, I come home from the, uh, the eclipse. Um, let me see. My kit, my right, Wagner chicken fryer, both the bottom and the top, I will need to strip and re-season. I'm also going to need to strip and re-season the lid for my sportsman uh, deep fryer because there's definitely rust developing there. And I'm sure there are a couple of other pieces as well that I still need to uh, strip and re-season. Well, including this one. Um, even though this one looks pretty nice, uh, you know, the fact that somebody else seasoned it means that I should probably strip it and season it myself. This is the uh, BSNR Pitta Pat's Porch uh, number three skillet that uh, I acquired recently uh, from eBay of all, was it eBay? I think it was eBay of all places. And this is one of those ones that I uh, caught my eye several years ago, finally succumbed to temptation when I saw it at a decent price and ended up getting it. Even though this is actually pretty rough, it has uh, casting flaws in a few places. But nonetheless, those folks who know about Pitta Pat's Porch, they know that they are, or maybe were, a restaurant in, well, they were in Atlanta. You know, it says so right here, Atlanta, Georgia. And for decades, they uh, served their meals out of these cast iron skillets, and they gave away the skillets as souvenirs. So as a result, you can find those all over the place, especially at antique malls. <laughs> so, and that was where I came across the Pitta Pat's Porch Pan for the first time. Didn't pass it up. And it's been kind of like in the back of my mind ever since. Uh, J.R. finishes. When we had the eclipse here uh, in 2017, I was amazed at how the shadows looked different on the ground. Yes, exactly. I saw that too. I was seeing that as well. They, um, I was in Massachusetts in 2017 when we had, what was it, something like an 80 to 90% <clears throat> eclipse in that area. And yeah, that was an experience. I could see that. The shadows on the ground and the fact that when, total, when the eclipse hit its maximum, everything felt like it was twilight. Even though the sun hadn't dimmed that much, it, it was really felt like uh, twilight, and even the evening birds started singing for a few minutes then. So yes, that indeed was an experience I, I'm looking forward to seeing again next week. Uh, I'll find a way to get it to make it work. <laughs> That's the best we can say. Um, it has great looking, great looking type though. I have two and one is hard to read. Yeah, I did notice that. And I'm wondering if it's because of the way this guy seasoned it perhaps, but I'm thinking maybe of just stripping this one completely and seasoning it myself as well. But you are right that this has uh, some pretty distinct uh, markings on it at least. So yeah, it, it, this is definitely good, not just a display piece, of course, but a, yet another <laughs> user. I got a Harry Potter owl skillet. It's a small $2. Really, an owl skillet? I didn't even know they had one. And a BSR corn pan this week. Corn pan was a dollar. Looks like they used it and threw it in uh, donate plate unwashed. Oh, boy, that, that's uh, pretty impressive. You definitely have yourself a score there. Uh, well, guess what? It's been almost 10 minutes already. What can I say? Let's give it one last try uh, because we are getting on this evening and I would like to finish this up <laughs> and I'm sure you folks would too. So we've gone this long. We'll give this one more try Ugh, because yeah, definitely this is getting pretty brown on top as well, even though the inside still actually looks golden. Uh, yeah, here's this little part. I made a mistake there. <laughs> However... Let's see what the last 10 minutes have done, especially since it is it has now been 65 minutes. So, no time like the present. And the answer is 
Oh, man. Hate to say it. It's still not done. Ugh. All right. Now I'm getting a little bit exasperated. Mm. Still tastes pretty good, though. And I don't dare turn it up because, I mean, you can see the outside is starting to get brown. But, you know, you might be right. I may very well have overfilled this. Nonetheless, back in we go one more time. Ah, oh, man. All right. Since this thing seems to be taking its dear sweet time, let me pull one other thing out. Because even though this is blazing hot as well, I had this in the oven. And maybe I should have done this. I heated up my New York skillet, um, the New York cast iron pan. My intention was to fill the uh, that actual loaf pan up and then put the extra batter into this New York pan to make a second cake. And, you know, I probably should have done that. I think I'm going to have to remember that the next time. So if nothing else, I think this demonstrates that that loaf pan – probably still has less volume than the fluted cake pan because I've been able to do a good pound cake in that fluted cake pan using the same recipe. But nonetheless, let's just keep going. Uh, there's really not much else I can say. However, look at this. This one came in, I, I did last year when the American Skillet Company was going out of business. So I felt this was the last opportunity to get one of these cast iron pans shaped like one of the United States. And since the New York pan was available, well, I took the chance and I got it. And I'm not regretting it. This is yet another heirloom that I'm glad to have and will eventually pass on to the people uh, dearest to me when I go my, my own way. But other than being morbid, I've also made uh, cornbread in this. I've made pizza in this. So we've got New York pizza. You could definitely call it that. And this is a nice piece of cast iron. And then, wouldn't you know it, a few months ago, the American Skillet Company came back into business. It seems that they were bought out by a, by a new owner. And so now, as a, result, as a result, they're open again, and they are producing cast iron pans once again. So... Oh, well, that's all right. I still have a, a good heirloom mod nonetheless. It's all good. I never got any of my cooks perfect the first time. Yes, exactly. American Skillet Company is back and added more skillets very recently. I'm going to have to take another look at their website then. But yes, they are back. However, yeah, exactly. I mean, as I said already, this oh, I tripped. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, as I said... This is my very first time cooking in the Lodge loaf pan. So it's a new experience for me. Uh, I am not used to this pan the way I am used to the fluted cake pan. So the fact that this uh, cake is taking longer than I expected, well, that's my own fault. Uh, again, this is all a learning experience. And well, if nothing else, I'm learning. I'm learning that the next time I make one of these cakes, I'm not going to fill up the uh, the pan quite as much. <laughs> but we will get it done nonetheless. All right. Yes, exactly. Uh, American Skillet Company is back. What is your oven temp? My oven temp now is 350. Uh, I initially had it to three, uh, 425 when I first heated up the pan and I first put it in the oven. But right after I put it in the oven, when I remembered, I turned the temperature down to 350 so that the oven would cool as the cake baked. And that, of course, would prevent the cake from burning on the outside. Although it does still look like it's, trying, it's, it's starting to get brown nonetheless. And let me make sure I didn't make a mistake that way. Was it supposed to be 350? Uh, 425? Um, Turn it down, place the hot cake immediately, turn down to 350. No, that's right. Based on the recipe that I put together, this is the correct temperature. It is supposed to be 350 degrees. So that means all I can do is keep on waiting. Because uh, sooner or later, this cake is going to get properly cooked on the inside. 
And that, of course, is the most important part. Because if nothing else, you can still see through the cracks that it is still uh, definitely golden on the inside and it is not burned. So just have to uh, be a little bit more patient. Yeah, this is your first trial run, so I think it's normal for a flu. Yes, exactly. Not a bad one either. Yeah, no, I will agree with you there, Cynthia Wesley. Just looked on the American Skill Company site. The New York pen is one hundred thirty dollars. I don't think the pen, I don't think that's much of a difference from what they were selling it for before. So that's not a bad thing. Glad to hear that actually. And yes, I think you're right. Um, yeah, I know. I have no reason to get frustrated. I'm going to uh, remain calm. I mean, at this point, granted, this video has gone on now for an hour and 39 minutes. So, yeah, I feel like I've talked a lot. <laughs> but we will just hold on for another few minutes at least. I do want to get this thing out of the oven so that I can get it uh, onto a plate and then go to bed. But until then, well, we just have to keep on talking about cast iron. And I've done pretty good so far. I mean, just right here, I've got the uh, this um, this mini ham boiler. I've talked about the Camp Chef uh, loaf pan. I've talked about the Pity Pat's porch, the uh, American <clears throat> skillet New York pan, along with a number of other ones on my rack. So, yeah, we've definitely covered a lot of ground tonight. And, of course, there is always more ground to go. In fact, uh, I forget if I told you uh, – that pan that I was given as a gift by um, Louis J, you know, Louis J Cast Iron Cooking, he sent me a vintage favorite number eight cast iron skillet. Well, I have to admit, I gave that one away as a present. Uh, that I, I told you I've, I have met a uh, lovely lady who has five kids. No, I'm, we are just friends. When I'm saying I've met a lovely lady, I mean I have. But we're just friends. I'm not saying that we are uh, hooking up or anything like that. But nonetheless, I've been hanging out with her and her kids. And so that means I've been doing my best to help improve her kitchen. She was in desperate need of some decent cookware in her kitchen. And I did my best to help her out with that including donating one of my uh, cast iron pans and all the different ones I felt that I would want to donate. I decided to give her that one, the vintage uh, favorite number eight skillet. So that is now in her kitchen and she has been using it regularly. Just the other day, I noticed it was there on her stove and it, it looked immaculately seasoned. So she's definitely been using that pan, in which case I'm quite glad to have given it away to her. So, yeah, that makes me happy. On the other hand, the uh, space in my st uh, on my rack that was taken up by the, um, by the favorite skillet, well, I have uh, replaced it already with that other pan that I uh, just received last, uh, last week. I'm sure you folks remember that one already, and here it is. The Year of the Dragon skillet. This is the one that, uh, again, I uh, acquired recently because, yeah, again, I couldn't resist it. This is definitely going to be a memento of 2024 as well as any year that has the Year of the Dragon. I still have not even taken the uh, label off of this one yet because I hope to take this one with me to the National Cornbread Festival and I'll have a chance to be able to show it to uh, friends there. At which point, then I will definitely take the label off and use it. Because I've said enough times, the pans in my kitchen are going to be users as much as possible. All right. Hey, well, it's getting on once again. Uh, and hello, Papa and Mrs. Cindy. Oh, so you had a power loss. Well, that's good. That's good news. And thank you for showing up here. All right. Well, time once again. Let's get this hot pen out of the way, and let's see what's happening now. I really hope we are getting into it because, you know, uh, it has been – what time has it been now? Um, when did I put that in the oven? Uh, oh, yeah. It is, I, I, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. It was at about 8.30. So we're talking an hour and 15 minutes. 
Well, here we go one more time. All right. And it, uh, we've got it once again. So yet again, here we are. And it's definitely getting more brown on the top, isn't it? Here is the pound cake once again. In fact, I'm getting a little worried that I haven't overcooked it. But let's give this another shot, shall we? Hmm. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely starting to get a little exasperated because it mm, still tastes good. Oh, and that is definitely hot even on the inside. And yet, uh, all right. I know that a lot of people went crazy over the Dolly collection, but I'm not one of them. The one with her face looks wrong. Okay, yeah, I, nice dragon pan. I was born in a dragon Mike, dragon year. Might get one. All right. Well, like it or not, I'm going to give this one last try. That's all I can do at this point. Because uh, after this, in another 10 minutes, I mean, it's going to be getting close to 10 o'clock. And then I've got to get to bed. And just as important, this will have been in the oven for close to an hour and a half. So we've really got to be getting done with it by now. Oh, man. Yeah. I am uh, a little surprised as well. Because, as I said, I actually like this recipe here. I mean, actually, I better put this in the sink right now. Maybe after I kind of indulge. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, one, one mouthful of the cake batter and that's it. Because I'm not even going to be eating the cake. Um, so that was my version of splurging. I will say that much. All right. Essentially, another 10 minutes. And one way or another, I'm going to call it. Because um, even if the cake is not done and I have to put it up in the, in, in the oven again, well... As I said, we are getting on nonetheless, and we really, you know, um, this is a work night. I do have to get up tomorrow, so I can't stay up much later, but we will see what we can do. Anyway, Dragon Pan is currently sold out, really. I tried to get one about a week ago from the Costco site. Well, that's interesting. So the question now, of course, is will Lodge reproduce it? And the answer to that is I don't know, because I noticed... With the Cracker Barrel series, after Cracker Barrel has sold out, has sold out by the Fourth of July each year, they have not reproduced any of those pans, with one exception, the Buffalo Nickel Skillet. All of the other Cracker Barrel pans sold out, and they seem to be gone, which kind of a pity for at least a couple of those pans. In particular. The Lady Liberty Walking Liberty Half Dollar Skillet. I mean, I would think that that is one that could very well be a uh, perpetual seller if Lodge were to re-release it. But, of course, it depends on what they decide. So, until then, well, and again, the Dragon Skillet, you know, is by Costco, a big corporation who yet seem to only produce that for their Asian stores. So... Will they uh, have them make it again? You know, maybe next year? I don't know. But we will find... Well, next year is not the year of the dragon. So I do not know. What I do know is I'm going to make good on my word. I am going to actually cook in that uh, year of the dragon skillet. And, and I will do my best to make it a, another user just like all the rest of my collection. <laughs> okay. Good night as well, Papa Dan. Yes, exactly. I have one of the Rise and Shine in my booth. Oh, yeah, those ones, the Rise and Shine skillets. Yeah, that's one of those ones I saw from Lodge that looked amusing. It just didn't appeal to me personally. See, I don't have an urge to get every single cast iron pan that Lodge has made. They've made a few nice ones, including a few that I found irresistible, like the Year of the Dragon one, but... As you said, I did not go crazy for the Dolly collection. That just doesn't appeal to me personally. It appeals to a lot of people, and good. I'm not criticizing them, but I'm not going to go out of my way for a Dolly pan. 
Likewise, I'm not going to go out of my way for those skillets that they released about a year or two with pictures of uh, of uh, campers, you know, like uh, trailer camper trailers on the back. That's also something really I can't say has appealed to me. And I have never seen a single episode of the Yellowstone TV series. So I really have not had any interest in the Yellowstone pans that, that Lodge released. But again, that's just me. I mean, they're obviously doing all of these to appeal to the collector's market. And not everybody wants to get everything in existence, unless you're some kind of a hoarder. So uh, I'm really finding it hard to get excuses <laughs> to keep getting more Lodge cast iron pans. I mean, I've got 15 number eight skillets in my collection alone. What the heck am I going to do with 15 number eight skillets? Well, the answer is, of course, cooking them. <laughs> that plus, they do make nice display pieces. Not all of them are from Lodge, though. When I'm saying I have 15 number eight skillets, I am referring to pretty much all of the uh, number eight pens I have in my collection, both vintage and modern. And rather than just simply uh, let you folks look at a uh, an empty uh, table like that, I might as well bring out another pan for you as as an example, and that would be the 2018 Made in America skillet, which was one of those large pans that I couldn't resist, and I'm uh, quite glad that I didn't either. So yeah, this is one I've been proud to uh, own as well, and one that I've uh, actually used quite a few times, and will probably keep on using when special holidays come around, because you know, when like say Memorial Day and the, or the Fourth of July comes, well, what better time is what is it than to make uh, your steak or whatever it is in a made in America cast iron pan? Hmm. Hope you find the mallard, Cynthia. I I almost lost my mind for a mallard. Huh. I lost interest in either after the bass fell in my, fell in my lap. I'm over it. <laughs> I have a Yellowstone pan. Uh, I keep it so that anyone who wants to cook something, they can use that one. It's, they, it's easy for anybody to identify, yes. Uh, we're waiting to see a specialist to get their opinion. <laughs> I guess you're talking about cast ironitis, and I can't, certainly can't blame you there either. All right, we're getting down to about another three minutes. Then we will give this pan, give this cake one more look, regardless of, uh, well, whether it's done or not. Because, as I said, I have got to get to bed. <laughs> All right. I'm hoping, though, because, yeah, this cake is definitely getting browned on the top now. So I'm, ge I'm getting a little worried, uh, as long as it's not actually burnt on the top. But we'll see what happens. All right, not not sweating it anymore. Just wanting it because I'm yeah. I have that scene on my sportsman, Randy. I'm over it after that bass. Okay, yeah, I know. I know you're. I know the feeling there. Uh, these collector skillets are an interesting market. Uh, I don't think that they're a bubble that's going to burst. Uh, partly because, well, they're cast iron pans. You know, you can always use them for the rest of your life. So that even if people forget about the Yellowstone TV series, you've still got yourself a cast iron pan, you know, that will be good to use for the rest of your life. So what's wrong with that? Uh, likewise, with uh, all of the Cracker Barrel pans or the uh, Rise and Shine pan or the Naked and Covered in Oil pan, all of which are amusing, but uh, would you say those are going to be um, unmistakable collector's items now? It's hard to say. You never know. All right. Not sweating it anymore. Yeah, exactly. Put a foil tent on it. Hmm. That's certainly possible. It was strictly for being a show-off. All right. Well, at this point now, we're getting to the point where I'm going to have to make some room once again. So let me put this pen back where it belongs. Over here on the rack. And we will get ready one last time. Phew. Where did I just put my gloves? Put my gloves down somewhere. 
And now I can't find them. Here they are over here. Okay. Here we go again. Last time, folks. And from the smell of that cake, I'm not even sure I should put it in the oven again because it's definitely browned on top now. On the other hand, it still has a good color to it. But there we are, folks. Still looks nice, though. I mean, if I sound tired, well, as I said, <laughs> we've gone on about half an hour longer than I expected. Nonetheless, where did I put that skewer? There it is. Got to make sure as well that the skewer is nice and clean. Uh, so that I'm not, I don't get a false reading. And what can we do but give it one more try? Put it all the way in, take it all the way out. Uh-oh. Hey, well, what do you know? All right, I guess, I mean, I've gone this far. Might as well be absolutely sure that, uh, yeah, the, uh, there's still a little bit yet, but I'm going to have to call it. Besides, you know, this is still a hot pan. It's likely this is probably going to continue baking for at least the next 20 minutes anyway. So, yeah, put the other loaf pan next to the lodge when you take it out of the oven to compare their size. Yes, exactly. Uh, I definitely need to do that. So let me bring this out here. Here is the uh, Camp Chef loaf pan. If I move it up here to the edge, you can see again that the lodge pan is maybe about half an inch taller and it's about an about two inches longer or an inch on each side. So there is actually a noticeable difference there as far as the two are concerned. All right, I had better take one or two pictures of this. And then I think we're going to call it, which also means I'm gonna try flipping this in about another 20 minutes. <laughs> but I'm not staying on because as I said, I really have to I really have to call it a night. Besides, we always have next week. So let me just get one or two photos. Yeah, because this doesn't look too bad at all. Click. Click. And click. All right, there we go. So anyway, here's the pound cake that I insisted on making. <laughs> As a result, this, uh, this ended up becoming a longer uh, talking session than I expected, but that's all right. I can only hope, though, as always, that we haven't, yeah, that I haven't bored you too much, folks, because I would indeed like to uh, see you again when we go back to some uh, more interesting cooking next week. Turn off the oven and leave it in there a few minutes so it won't burn. It'll cook. All right, strawberry or raspberry jam on that bad boy. Well, we will certainly find out. Okay. Um, and again, I'm going to be flipping this completely out of the pan one way or another at quarter past 10, and we'll see how it all turns out. But yes, this is my first attempt anyway at baking a cake in the lodge loaf pan. So I'm definitely going to have to make more attempts. I also want to do some real bread with this because, you know, that's kind of the whole point. So, um, but until then, though, we can always continue because we've got a lot more cast iron to work our way through. And we've got next week, which is, uh, what is next week? Uh, we are only getting into, uh, we're still in the beginning of April. Today is the 8th. Oh, yeah. You know what next week is? Tax time. Uh, I already took care of my taxes, and the less said, the better. Uh, but still, that also means we can do some cooking next week just as something of a stress reliever to help us get over it. So until then, that means I guess we are just going to have to call this an evening. But I appreciate everybody who's stuck around all this time. Nonetheless, there's still 54 people here, even after all this time. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been kind enough to stay here all this time, like Shadow Walker XM, 
and Chris McGee and Val's Black Cat's Rules. And thank you very much for coming into my kitchen. I do appreciate it with all of you folks. And Papa Dan, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I certainly, this has been a, a good evening as well. I can thank only thank everybody so much. Thank you for all your time. Somebody's trying to call me. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to hang this up. Hold on one second. Let me end this for the moment. Okay. And then from there, we will get on and uh, we will, well, as I said, we will just uh, let this cool off and we will uh, be, all be back again next week to do it all over again. So thank you to everybody who's been kind enough to show up. And thank you for everybody who's, uh, yeah, who's actually enjoyed this. And thank you especially for, you know, for giving me an excuse to have some fun. So thank you, everybody. And we'll see you all next Wednesday.